What's going on guys? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next example. So you're trying to estimate the mean or average grade for a university course. From a sample of 16 students, you find the sample mean and standard deviation to be 78% and 10% respectively. And you have to find a 95% confidence interval. Now notice how this question, it's pretty much almost exactly the same as the previous question that we did. But there's one key difference. If you notice in this question, we're not given the population standard deviation. So the standard deviation for all the students taking the university course. All we're given is the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So this is a case here where we're dealing with the population standard deviation being unknown. Right, so the previous question it was known, in this question it is unknown. And whenever the population standard deviation is unknown, as we've mentioned before, what distribution are we going to use to find this confidence interval? We're going to use the T distribution. Right, so that's going to be the difference between the previous question and this question. So the T distribution, I'm going to show you how to do it with both the T table, which you can print out. I have a link in the description box if you want to print out as reference. And I'm going to show you how to do it with the calculator as well. Now the T table we haven't really used before, so I'm going to explain how to do that in this video as well. But the process is pretty much the same as using a Z table. It's going to be very similar. It's going to be pretty simple. If you're comfortable with the Z table, then using the T table shouldn't be too bad. So as I did in the previous question, first thing I like to write down is what I have. So notice that we're given the sample mean, which is X bar, so that's 78%. The sample mean, or uh, the sample standard deviation rather, is given as well, that's 10%. And then uh, the sample size is 16. And if you remember from the previous video, I introduced something called the alpha which is one minus the confidence percentage that we are using. So one minus 0.95, that gives us 0.05. It's basically the likelihood that the estimate, the population estimate is gonna fall outside of this confidence interval. Now, when the population standard deviation is unknown, the confidence interval is gonna take this format here. It's gonna be X bar plus or minus the T value, alpha over two, times the standard, the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. So notice it's very similar to the format of the confidence interval when the standard deviation was known in the previous question. The only difference is that instead of this being z, we're now going to be using the t distribution, so it's a t here. And then before, we were using the population standard deviation here, but since we don't have that anymore, we have to use the sample standard deviation right there. And then everything else is pretty much the same. So if we plug everything in, the sample mean is 78, plus or minus. Now the T value at alpha over two, notice that alpha is 0 0.05. So that is 0 0.025 right there. And then the sample standard deviation is 10% over the square root of the sample size, which is 16. Now this here, this T subscript 0 0.025, we're gonna have to get from the T table. So I wrote out a portion of the T table over here that we can use. And as I said, there's a link to this in the description box if you wanna print it out just to have as a reference. So very similar to the Z table with a couple of differences. So first off, just as a little review, what does T.025 even mean? It basically means the T value, so we're still centered at zero, but it's the T value for the distribution where the area under the curve to the right of the distribution is 0 0.025, like that. And so the area to the left of that T value in the distribution is going to be 0.975. And again, that makes sense, again, because for centered at zero, and this here has to be 95%, since we're finding a 95% confidence interval, then these areas outside have to total up to 0.05 and then split evenly. This is going to be 0 0.025 
and this is going to be 0 0.025, right? So that's where that 0 0.025 is coming from. Now, when we were working with the Z table, what we were doing was if we knew this was 0 0.025, we would be looking for 0.975, right? Because this is the area over here and the Z table always gave us the area to the left of a certain Z score. Well, notice that the format for the T distribution, the table, it's a little different. Notice that we have degrees of freedom on the left column, on the outer left column. So notice I have one, two, and then I skipped a bunch and I went to 15. And if you remember from a video before when I first talked about the T distribution, the degrees of freedom is always equal to N minus one. There's multiple T distributions that you could use. I went over that in the overview. So notice that the sample size in this case is 16 minus one. So the degrees of freedom is 15. So we know we're going to be using this row over here. And there's actually more values, but I just cut it off here at T.025 because that's actually the value that we are looking at. So that's the value that we need here, right? So you first got to find the degrees of freedom, which is pretty easy. It's always N minus one, sample size minus one. So it's 15. And then depending on what this is, you just look for it in the upper row. And so T.025, match that up with degrees of freedom 15, 2.131. So this here is 2.131. And this is a T distribution with a degrees of freedom of 15, right? So no, remember there's multiple T distributions like I talked about before, depending on the degrees of freedom. For this specific one, degrees of freedom is 15 that T value right there is 2.131. So the area to the right of that is 0 0.025, the area to the left is 0.975. But notice that the area to the left of it, we're not really even using, right? We didn't even use that to find anything. Versus with a Z table, you do need that, right? Because it gives you the probability to the left of a certain Z score, right? So the tables are sort of organized a little bit differently. So we know now what the, um, the T value is that we're looking at. So we could just plug that in. You know what, actually, I'm just going to write over here. I'm going to erase this and I'm going to plug in 2.131. And when you end up doing that in your calculator, you end up getting plus or minus 5.3275 over here. So remember that there is the margin of error. And then if you split that up into an actual interval, that's the confidence interval right there. That's the 95% confidence interval. So what that means is you could be 95% confident with this sample that you took that the mean uh, or average grade for a university course for everyone taking the university course is going to be between these values over here. Now, sometimes they'll give you this uh, confidence interval and they'll ask for this margin of error. And all you do then is you just subtract, uh, you just take the difference between the two. So this minus that, and then just divide it by two and you end up getting 5.3275. So just be on the lookout for those types of questions as well. And then if you're to use the calculator, the stats calculator, you'd go to the main menu, hit stat, hit F4, this F4 here, it's going to be I N T R, right? Which represents interval short form. We're finding a confidence interval, that's why. F2, you're going to have a choice between the Z distribution or the T distribution. So this time it's going to be the T distribution that we're using. And then F1, it's just we're dealing with one sample. And then it's going to take you to this screen over here. So the data, just make sure it's variable. The confidence level, that's the confidence percentage, but it's in decimals, so 0.95. X-bar is the sample mean, 78. This SX over here is the uh, sample standard deviation, which is 10. And then the sample size is 16. And then when you execute all of that in the calculator, you should get this over here. The uh, 
these uh, third and fourth decimal places, they might be a little bit different. And that's actually because this number here, 2.131, it's actually rounded in the table, the number that they give you. And the calculator doesn't round. So the calculator is more specific, but your uh, the first two decimal places should pretty much be the, uh, the exact same. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you find the confidence interval. Remember when the population standard deviation is unknown. Right, so very similar process to when it is known. It's just we're using a T distribution and we're using the sample standard deviation versus when it's known, we're using the Z distribution and the population standard deviation. Now, in the next two examples, I'm actually going to do the same question, but what's going to be different about it is that instead of being given the sample mean and the standard deviation, I'm going to give you what the sample data actually is. So for example, if we were to take a sample of 16 students, instead of just telling you the information about the sample, I'm going to actually give you the 16 marks of the students that got the mark in this course. And so it's going to be a little bit more work because we're going to have to actually find the sample mean and find the sample standard deviation. But nevertheless, it's a question that you're going to have to run into. The calculator work is also going to be a little bit different, so make sure you watch those videos.